Welcome to the Microsoft Partner Network podcast. Every week we bring in industry leaders and Microsoft partners to talk about the big ideas shaping business and technology today. In today's episode, we speak with Mike Weaver, Director of Enterprise Migrations and Product Manager at QuadroTech Solutions, about the importance of customer lifetime value and how they've been addressing some of the biggest migration challenges in the SaaS space today. Hey, Mike, thanks for joining us. We are using Skype for Business. He's in Connecticut, and I'm here in Seattle, so it's our first podcast via Skype. Very exciting for us to try out. How are you doing, Thanks Mike? Thanks for having me. Good. Thanks for having me virtually here today. Yeah. I see your face at least, so that's good. <laughs> um, Mike, tell me a little bit about yourself and QuadroTech. Sure. Um, so I joined QuadroTech from industry just over about two years ago uh, from a Fortune 50 enterprise uh, insurance company doing merger acquisition and investor work inside of the mail space and moved over to QuadroTech. Uh, QuadroTech was founded in 2012. Uh, it's been around, uh, the technology's been around since 2005. It's, uh, was, the technology was sold to a company, and then the founders rebought it out after they wanted uh, the software to go in a different direction than how the consulting firm was taking it, and that's what created the, uh, the monster of QuadroTech that we have today. How big is the company? Where is it located? So the company is based in Zug, Switzerland. We have about 120 employees across the globe, and uh, gosh, I think we're up to 16 or 17 countries now. Uh, so very highly uh, remote workforce. We've got offices in the UK, Slovakia, uh, so in the states. Okay, very cool. Tell me a little bit. I, I'm sure since you started in 2008 or 2005. The company's been around since uh, the original technology has been around since 2005, but the company started in 2012. So you've gone through some transformation and your customers have been changing as well. Can you talk about what's been the biggest challenge for QuadroTech over the past few years? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge has been we used to be really project based. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we do a lot of migration projects, archive migrations, PST migration, things like that. And we would come into a project and go away. Uh, and that was really, we'd have very satisfied customers, but once the project was done, we really didn't have a lot of value to provide after that. And really the change in the last few years has been moving into um, other aspects of our business to be able to provide long-term relationships and build on the relationships that we have. So that's where our acquisition of Cognitive and these reporting tools and this other value that we're providing. So it's not really short-term relationships relationships as much, uh, but really the trying to build that long-term customer value that our customers need uh, and building on the skill set that we bring to the, to the projects. What have you had to do to move from project services to a managed service? You talked about reporting a little bit, but can you go a little deeper on that uh, operationally and also about what kind of payoff you've been seeing by doing that? Yeah, I think what's different for us is, uh, you know, we started more as a software company, and now we do software and delivery of our own solutions. And that's allowed us to, even with partners and working with partners, a lot of times we'll still be involved and deliver some of our software solutions in that network so that we're able to really provide that value and that expertise. Uh, so, you know, it's not just, hey, you know, we're going to buy 10,000 seats of a, a piece of software and call, call us if you need anything. Thing. Instead, we're really getting heavily involved and in, in really providing in-depth consulting so that the customer is having a better outcome of the project. Uh, it brings up more discussion and more needs of other things that they're going through. It brings us more into the problems that they have so that we can continue to build that relationship and, and just keep things moving. What are some of the biggest pain points or problems that you're seeing with your customers? I think one of the, the biggest challenges that we have today is in the merger and acquisition space. Um, that's just been a, a, a real challenge in the Office 365 world. Uh, we've seen uh, with the, the huge increase in use of Office 365, we're seeing the companies having to combine tenants or split tenants up, and that's really causing a lot of challenges. How are you starting to solve that? 
So it's interesting with the, with the partner network, we're seeing a lot of the partners really step up and provide services where they're able to pull a bunch of solutions together from uh, either software or custom coding or consulting uh, and things like that. So the the partner community is really stepping up to fill that gap. Um, the, the problem really stems back to the original days of Office 365, where when we talk about security and wanting to ensure that a company keeps their data separate from all the other customers in Office 365, those walls were very important. Uh, however, for the, and it's really a minority number-wise of, of Office 365 uh, tenants that need to do these, um, you know, mergers, acquisitions, and divestures, um, that's becoming a, a really big challenge because it's working against that security story that, that really uh, was a big concern at the beginning. Uh, so we see the partner community with the amount of customers that they touch really driving the solutions and, and helping drive what they need out of us as a primarily software company um, and, and engaging us at that level. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like with these M&A situations and bring that to life a little bit? Yeah, so I think um, as a similar story, when people talk about Office 365 adoption, they talk about they that uh, starts with just email, but Office 365 always goes well beyond email. It has OneDrive, File, SharePoint, CRM, all these other technologies that are there. So what the partners are doing is they're able to find the best solution in each one of those categories and bring together a total solution. There's a real demand from the partner network to resolve Resolve the entire problem, and I think you're going to see in the next few months um, a real focus from us in the software community trying to resolve those those problems. But the partner community is what's pushing that because they can take all the they can uh, pick and choose their solutions from from four different other partners uh, to give that total experience. Um, that's really the major problem now is you've got to deal with each one separately deal with each problem separately versus one each stream, tenant. you're right. Instead of just picking up a tenant and moving it, you have to do a CRM migration. You have to do a SharePoint migration, a OneDrive migration, an email migration, and there's not a total product set out there today. And so you're finding that actually partners working together um, and with each other is helping in some of it, build out some yeah. of those solutions? In two ways. So the, I think the main thing is they're able to take their expertise and actually solve the mutual customer's total problem, but also they're sitting there banging on the door of the other partners demanding improvements and changes and and using their expertise to say, you know, what they need. And, and um, you know, partners are more than willing to pilot these solutions because there's such a need. So really trying to improve the space, um, which, you know, there, there's multiple aspects to that. If they can get it improved, they they can uh, streamline these projects and and solve these solutions. They, even the solutions they provide um, right now with the limitations in the technology, they take a very long time. Um, so anything that they can do to increase uh, the amount of data throughput or, or reduce the number of hours that they're spending on it allows to, to create these projects and, and allow them to be more successful. One thing that uh, that is a huge focus for Microsoft is security. And with what you're talking about with M&A and files and really protected information, can you talk about uh, what you've been seeing and what kind of customer needs are? Yeah, I think uh, one of the, the largest aspects is as uh, Office 365 has expanded into new ID management solutions, multi-factor authentication, all these aspects, when you're combining the two, you have to deal with that issue as well. Users are used to having a single sign-on. You know, when you talk to help desk professionals, well, you know, even today in all of our password reset functions and everything else, the number one help desk call is still a password reset. Yeah. So dealing with um, ID matching and and uh, even just training. You know, I have multi-factor auth in my old company, and I have a different multi-factor auth solution in the new company. Um, if the project isn't being done all at once, I have to go back to this tenant to get this information to get my files, but I have to log into my uh, Exchange Online piece in this other tenant. So the security firms are really trying to, and our, our mutual customers, trying to stream 
streamline that and and deal with that user piece. Um, and again, because of the way the tenants have been designed to to not commingle, and it's been the focus is you don't want the two tenants communicating. Yeah. Um, that's the whole point. It's really uh, created the challenges in that regard. What I'm hearing is, and we talk about this a lot, is you're really transforming your business. I mean, you're talking about digital transformation. Uh, uh, you're breaking up how things used to be to create something that's a much better experience for customers and that's much more seamless. Uh, what do you think going into the future? What are you preparing for or expecting um, or doing as a company to keep moving through this transformation process? I think in the in the merger acquisition world, the projects are are really too large for firms to completely take on their own. So that's where I think you're going to see, although, you know, we talk about the partner community trying to put all these different solutions together, you're going to see the software um, partners really trying to build the software solutions, but really heavily relying on other partners in the space for those services, for the total, you know, bringing that project together. Um, I think you're going to see some of the software houses trying to do it in-house. And I'm not sure how successful that's going to be when a lot of the software partners out there don't have as deep of a reach as the, as the partner network that we have today. Um, so I think that's primarily where we're going to see a shift is um, the, the partner network is going to have less software vendors to work with to create their solutions, but they're still going to be providing all that, we'll call it the magic sauce of, of a, a total project and, and total solution in the space. In your experience, how have you worked with partners the best? I think we're most successful with the partners where they're the ones that pick up the phone and call us directly. Uh, as a product manager, you know, the, the deep and, and, you know, sometimes product feedback takes a while to get to the organization, you know, through a web page for a service ticket. Um, instead, we're changing where us as product managers are directly doing post calls with these partners, um, you know, really trying to solicit feedback. Um, as, a, as a scrum shop, we can very quickly make changes to our tools but you've got to know the priority uh, and, and working with the partners in the communication, um, removing layers um, for these partners to get to someone like a product manager has been essential. So we've kind of changed where our channel manager um, has direct lines to every single person in the company, and their role is to really ensure that that feedback or these calls and collaboration gets to us as soon as possible so we can react as quickly as we can to the market. So just listening, a lot yeah. of listening. And, being and it's agile. amazing because it's a classic, yep, being agile, and it always comes down to communication. Um, but I think a lot of firms get stuck where they put all these processes and procedures in. Um, but this is one that you need to streamline it really as, as much as possible where someone like a product manager can directly talk to a technician or a consultant that's doing the on-the-ground work. Um, otherwise, everything gets lost in translation, and, and, and anything that slows down an M&A project affects the bottom line of the organization involved because they just made this massive investment. They want to integrate as soon as possible. So extra hours is, or extra days and extra weeks on a project is, is very impactful. Do you have any any tips, like if somebody's going to walk away and they're thinking about their customers, partners, M and A, um, what what would you suggest? What would be your tip? I think in the merger acquisition space, you know, it's a classic uh, a piece of advice, but you have to understand the emotions that are involved here in a merger acquisition project. Um, you're taking two firms, uh, particularly in a merger that has operated, you know, separately for years. The users involved are going through incredible change in their work lives. You know, we spend more time at work than we do, you know, any, with anything else in our lives. And suddenly when that user comes in Monday morning, 
they're integrated into their new company. Um, so when things don't work, it can be a very even uh, even more traumatic experience on top of an, over, an already emotional piece. Your partners, your consultants that are there too, they may feel they're in a highly competitive space because the you know things are getting combined together, and there may only be one on the other side of that project. This might be the last project that they do. So I think um, you know we talked about streamlining communication. But ensuring that you're sensitive to the emotions of the project in this so that, you know, when people are upset, you can kind of put it in context better, internalize it better, and give the urgency that these projects need. And I think that builds success. Partnering with human resources, partnering with communication teams, all of those classic things to improve communication, but it still comes down to being, you know, the emotional intelligence of a, of a stressful project. What, what do you do in those situations, Mike? What's your... I, I think it's uh, it's the being calm, you yeah. know, understanding it's not personal. Keep calm yeah, and it's carry the classic on. things. Yeah, one. keep calm and carry on. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, when someone's... It's understanding that when someone's really upset about their files not being there, it's not really completely why it, their files aren't there. It's because, you know, they're in a new office, they have a new boss, they have a new, you know, they someone took early retirement who they really liked, you know. There's 17 things going on. And this might have just been the thing to push it over the edge. Yeah. So some understanding, empathy. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mike. We really appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening today. And check out the podcast description for show notes. Be sure to subscribe and keep in touch with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter at MS Partner. <laughs>